In a previous video, we built out the server room. Unfortunately, it gets a little hotter in here than we'd like it to. Today, we're going to fix that. Now there are several ways that we could go about venting the server room. In fact, what many people would do is just put in something called a ductless mini split. And so that's basically just an air conditioning unit that doesn't have any ducts. It just has one head unit um, inside and then a uh, compressor on the outside. In fact, we have that very type of unit in the uh, workshop uh, to keep the uh, workshop cool during the summer. Um, the problem with that is, is it's very expensive. So you know you can look to spend somewhere between you know four and eight thousand dollars um, to have a ductless mini sp uh, split put in. And um, I just don't think that we need anything that uh, big. Um, and I would call that active cooling, and I don't really think we need any active cooling um, in the server room. As a matter of fact, um, coming out of the back of the servers is roughly about uh, 90 to 95 degrees at any given time. Um, so the, the temperature of the room will rise to 95 degrees um, pretty easily, and it'll usually go over that a little bit, 98, 99 degrees. Um, just because of, of ambient heat, you know, stored in the walls in the room and stuff like that. So um, what I think the best solution in our case is because we already have a air conditioning system for the entire building that is more than capable of keeping the server room cool, we just don't want to run it all the time, right? And so the simplest solution for this, for our uh, server room, is just to get the heat out of there in the first place um, through exhausting hot air. And so what we're going to do is use this guy. And so this is basically a, uh, a big ass fan. It's from a company called AC Infinity and we're not sponsored by them and uh, we've not talked to them at all. Uh, I paid for that with my own money, uh, just to be clear, not sponsored. So um, we bought this. It is basically just a big ass fan and it will go up in the attic and uh, or just above the raised ceiling. And it will have a, it has a, um, a little uh, a, like a, a temperature controller that sits on the wall and you can set this to a certain temperature and what will happen is anytime the temperature rises above a certain degree it will turn the fan on and start exhausting it and what we'll do is we'll exhaust that into the return vents um, or the return box on the air conditioning unit and so basically it'll just raise the the temperature of the entire building up just a hair um, but keep it out of the server room. And so then the regular air conditioning system for the entire building can bring the temperature back down. And that way we don't have to have a dedicated unit for the server room. Uh, but this will work, it'll work really well. It's one of the same practices that you'll see used a lot uh, for cooling um, like, um, the, like like a lot of expensive houses have like a dedicated you know closet for um, all of like their amps and stuff for their theater rooms and this is the a very similar concept to what you'll see used in those situations again it's just about removing the heat it's not about adding cooling we just want to remove heat and so that's what we're going to do and let's get started So uh, one of the first things that we need to do is install a return air vent um, in the server room. It doesn't have one today. And so that's what this guy is. This is just uh, a regular old return air vent that will drop into the drop ceiling. So it will just drop in just like a ceiling tile above, uh, but it has a place on it uh, to add in a filter. And we definitely want a filter to filter any uh, air that comes out of the server room before it goes into the return. Um, uh, box on the air conditioning unit. And so on the back is this thing uh, that looks like a big giant bullseye. And what that's for is you use, so this is a, a starting collar um, for HVAC. So there, there's gonna be a duct that comes off of this and goes to our motor. We put this on here and the, the bullseye tells us where to cut the hole before we attach this. And so that's what we'll do. At first I used a regular box knife to cut out the hole, but that turned out to be a funny gag and the joke was on me. <laughs> the material was much too thick. So I had to come back for a second time with a hacksaw blade that could reach to the other side. The starting collar I chose has an adhesive backed foam pad for air tightness. This type is generally used on sheet metal boxes where you can then attach it with self tapping screws. Um, in my case, I just used some number eight machine screws and some fender washers to make it work. Then I just sat the assembled box into the drop ceiling in the server room. At Home Depot, I bought this really long section of insulated ducting. 
It seems like it just keeps going forever. And since I was a dum-dum and didn't think about opening this in the attic, I had to pull the whole thing unraveled up the stairs into the attic. It just kept going and going and going. Anyway, after a little fishing, the ducting arrived at the server room. Okay, so when you go to Home Depot, they are going to want to sell you duct tape for when you try to do an HVAC job on your own. And this, it may be counterintuitive, but this is like the absolute worst possible tape you could ever, ever, ever use on a duck. Uh, do not use duct tape on ducks. What you want to use is a combination of clamps. So this is just a, uh, like a worm gear clamp um, that you can get um, in the HVAC section of Home Depot. And then you want to use aluminum tape. So this is a sticky backed aluminum tape. This is what you want to use to tape up your ducts. So that's what we're going to use today. Working with insulated ducting is kind of a pain. It has three main components, the center duct, the insulation, and the outer jacket. Keeping the insulation out of the way while attaching the inner duct to the return is challenging. Um, a second person would come in quite handy. Once I got the center duct installed, I pulled the insulation and outer jacket over and taped it up. I kind of just rolled the outer jacket under the insulation like tucking in your shirt. The next thing I needed to do was to cut the old ceiling tile in half so that it will fit in the now square space left in the ceiling. I used a box cutter and it worked great. I installed the filter and cover, taking care to make sure that I had the louvers pointed in the right direction. Next, I moved to the attic and started mounting the AC Infinity cloud line. This project was actually going much easier than I expected it to. And that's when disaster always strikes. Okay, so um, it is like uh, 200 degrees up there and um, I was trying to film it and the camera kept turning over and the sweat was pouring down my face and I actually sweat all over the camera. And so I just went ahead and did it real fast. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, what I did though. And, um, and, I'll, and I'll talk you through it just a little bit. It's like, it's like 200 degrees up there and like three feet tall. So it's just really hard to work um, and film at the same time. But I'll show you what I did. So this is the duct that comes from the server room. So the one we ran earlier. It goes up here to the ceiling, and then that is the um, uh, AC Infinity uh, cloud line. It's an eight inch duct fan. It's like 800 or 900 CFM or something like that. So it's really, really fast, pulls a lot of air. And then that duct goes down here and into the side of the air conditioning unit. So this is the exact uh, sa same type of box that's in the return that we put in the server room. So I attached it exactly the same way to the uh, return side of the air conditioner. So this will pull in, um, even when the AC Infinity up here is not running, this will still be a return in that room. Uh, the AC Infinity will just move air whether the air conditioning unit is on or off uh, based upon what its temperature readings are. Okay, so the uh, AC Infinity has this uh, little control panel that um, does all kinds of neat things. It monitors temperature and humidity and um, all of that, and it will turn the unit on or off, and, and it will spin the, uh, spin the fan up or slow it down, all kinds of neat little things. And then it also has this temperature probe, and wherever you put this temperature probe is where the temperature is going to be monitored. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hang the uh, control panel just kind of on the wall, kind of close to the ceiling up here. And then I'm going to put the temperature sensor over on the ladder rack so it's closer to where the uh, exhaust of the server is, so, um, uh, or where the server rack is. And so I think that'll be a good spot for it. So let's go ahead and do that. I hung the controller on the wall using a couple of screw and drywall anchors and then ran the cables down from the drop ceiling. I really wish these controllers had the option to run the cables inside the wall and plug in from the back side. I ran the sensor cable through the ceiling and over to the ladder rack and then secured it with some Velcro. 
So we have our return. This is where the air gets sucked in by the AC Infinity and sent uh, to the air conditioning's return. We have the controller for the AC Infinity. This is where um, the AC Infinity gets its instructions based upon the temperature of the room. And then lastly, we have a temperature sensor that detects the temperature of the room. Okay, so it's 76 degrees in the server room right now, and we have the setting to come on at 80, so the fan is off. So I think this is going to work out really well. This should keep the uh, server room um, below 80 degrees or right at 80 degrees or less at, at all times. Um, I think there's probably a couple of questions that, that some of you are asking, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try to answer those now uh, before we go. So the first one is, well, you know, equipment really should be run, you know, like a lot of data centers want to run their, their, their servers at like 70 degrees and some even less. Um, but a lot of data centers have now backed off of that and said, you know, hey, we, we're not going to we're not going to keep data centers that cold. There's no real advantage. And, you know, look, I've looked at all the um, specs for my equipment and it's all designed to work up to like 100 degrees, in some cases, even 110 um, degrees That's Fahrenheit. And um, so I just, I don't see that as a problem. Now it might make the equipment like last longer. I mean, sorry, like if I was to cool the, 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 this down in here to like say 60 degrees, I might get another six months out of this server over its entire lifespan or something. That is a possibility, but I'm really just not worried about that. I won't have this gear that long. You know, I'll switch it out. I switch everything out every couple of years because that's what I do. I'm a geek and I like to always have the latest and greatest stuff. So I'm not too worried about that. Another question I know is going to be asked because people ask it to me all the time because I've done this solution um, at other places, including my, uh, like I said earlier, the theater room in my home. So um, in the, the winter, uh, the, um, uh, you can't really see it on camera, but there's a, a duct right here for the output from the AC and heater. And in the winter, we're going to be blowing hot air in this room. So now the servers are making it hot and we're blowing hot air in he here and here. How is, how is this going to solve that problem? Well, a couple of ways. So what it really depends on is what the ambient temperature of the entire building is. Because remember, we're relying on the central heat and AC to heat and cool the building. All we're trying to do is move this heat out of the room, out of this room, so it doesn't build up in here and it, it's dispersed amongst the entire rest of the building. So that's what we're trying to do. So even if it's blowing heat in here, um, it doesn't matter because as long as the ambient temperature of the building never gets over a certain temperature, then this room will never get over a certain temperature. Now, there's an even better way to handle that. There's a valve that I can turn um, on this, uh, this uh, uh, register right here and I can turn it off. So, so really, in the, in the winter months, um, there's no reason to actually add heat to this room at all because the servers will keep it plenty hot enough, right? So I'll actually probably wind up closing that um, during the winter months. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this video. Um, if you guys have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, I always try when I first publish a video for the first day or two to really follow along and, and reply to comments. And so if you have anything that you want to know, drop it in the, the comments below. I'll try to answer it. And for everybody else, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and I apologize for the audio issues in this video. I had some real problems with my handy recorder. I don't know what's going on with it. Got to figure that out. Uh, but I do, I'm well aware of the audio issues. See you in the next video.